Hello, I'm Rebecca Weber. You're watching Better for America, presented by AMAC, the Association of Mature American Citizens. Now joining me today is Tammy Bruce. She is a Fox News contributor and an AMAC Newsline columnist. You can find many of her great articles right there on amac.us. We have a great episode coming up in just a moment. Stay tuned, folks. We'll be right back. The Association of Mature American Citizens is the conservative voice for Americans 50 and older. AMAC is fighting for the values that you hold dear. Join today. Together, we can right the course of America. Tammy Bruce, welcome back to our show, Better for America. It's always so good to have you here with me. Thanks for joining. Well, it's my pleasure. You guys do great work. Love the association. I appreciate being invited. Wonderful, Tammy. There are so many issues coming to a head as we enter 2024, and you have written on a range of topics on AMAC.us, including foreign affairs, uh, the Trump persecutions, uh, of course, the embarrassing happenings that we see at the Biden White House, and the Jeffrey Epstein saga. Uh, but first, Tammy, I'd like to begin with something that I think has really gone unnoticed, and this is regarding Jack Smith's case against Trump. Now, we know that Elon Musk had tremendous impact when he lifted the ban that was imposed on Donald Trump. And there was initially a lot of criticism of Elon Musk. But as we today read back and look at the court testimony, this is quite shocking. Essentially, X, uh, formerly known as Twitter, was fined and forced to pay a huge fine in the hundreds of thousands of dollars for not turning over its records in a timely fashion uh, regarding Trump's account. And this prevented Twitter as well from letting Trump know that they were requesting this information. So instead of going to the National Archives, uh, Jack Smith's team reasoned that Trump was a flight risk and went directly to Twitter for information and then sued Elon Musk for failing to disclose information that they had already given the National Archives. And that included, Tammy, any Twitter user that ever interacted with at real Donald Trump. Now, what do you make of this latest development? Because I find this quite shocking, the breadth and the depth of this, essentially going after what I see as Republicans or those people who support Donald Trump. Right. Right. Well, it's it's bigger than what it seems to be on the surface. The immediate reaction is, oh, this guy's a bully. He's overreaching. It's fishing. But it's more than that. This is a dynamic where, you know, the president's Twitter account is in the National Archives, right? It is available for people, every tweet ever sent or received. And what he was doing was if he went there, then Trump would be alerted. Trump could appropriately assert executive privilege. I don't know if that would have stuck because it was a public platform, but it would have been a back and forth. But I think more than that, by going by going to Twitter, and, and then Smith would have been stopped by the courts in some ways because you know you that is becomes the question is is this over broad do other people then get caught in this net and i think that that was the conversation he did not want anyone to have what this did then as a result was effectively maybe even trying to make new law in a certain way that you can ignore executive privilege you can ignore uh, any target where you would normally be required to go to a certain place to get information. It's frankly, it's like lying to the FISA court, right? Mm. None of those rules that are there to protect a target of any law enforcement branch or the judiciary, uh, they just went around it trying to do whatever it is they wanted to do. And I think this is one of those dynamics, but it also sent a message to Twitter that you have to comply with the government no matter what, you also have no rights. It sent a message ultimately to Trump that when we did, we eventually found out about this, that nobody, you know, we want to get you and no matter what you do, we're going to do it. But also to your point, Rebecca, is that it sends a message to the average person. And this has been the point all along that if you support, if you engage with, if you join with, if you assist, if you get on a campaign, if you are a lawyer and represent him, we will destroy your lives. We are going to look at you and we're going to look at you, whether you're a a parent at a school board, uh, you know, know, taking advantage of your rights as an American citizen, or we're going to label you a terrorist. 
We're going to call you, you know, MAGA white extremists. But if it, and depending on the direct messages, those also would be in the National Archives from the platform is what is said between people uh, it, when they think there might be some privacy, but certainly maybe not with Twitter, but Twitter's not the government. So this was a message and an attempt to legitimize, to normalize this kind of backdoor into threatening either directly or indirectly everyone who gave Donald Trump a platform or anyone who even if you never shook his hand or went to an event or a rally, if you just tweeted him and said, good work, suddenly you're in the, uh, the purview of the federal government. You know, that and, was the point, I think. Sure. Uh, you know, and people are waking up and saying, OK, uh, if I if I like Donald Trump or America first policies, if I if I go against, uh, you know, that which the Biden administration stands for, which we know is wide open borders. They want men in women's bathrooms. I mean, the list goes on and on. You know, the number of young people that are being trafficked. This is such serious stuff. But no, if you. If you're not in full support of Joe Biden, you're labeled an extreme MAGA Republican, you're a domestic terrorist, you're a MAGA extremist. And this is something that has been, I think, apparently um, so obvious. Uh, the Biden administration's influence in these Trump persecutions, right, as Trump continues really to surge in the polls. Uh, now, normally <laughs> yeah. in an election year, I think candidates do try to do things that make them more likable, uh, appear more favorable. So the fact that Joe Biden continues to attack not only Donald Trump, Tammy, uh, but average Americans in the tens of millions who voted for him seems to me very counterproductive. Uh, it seems to me that that will hurt uh, any hope of his reelection. But my question for you is, why do you think that they continue to do these things and go, which I think goes against their best interests? Is this truly, are they that desperate? Are they afraid? Or is there something darker at play here? Well, I have to say it worked in 2020 mm. and they had a candidate that was not ready, that, we, that they knew the condition of Joe Biden. They, he did not interact with anyone. They were in the process and had not yet been caught at effectively a soft coup against uh, the then sitting president, Donald Trump. Again, lying to the FISA court, making stuff up about Russia, you know, all of that, everybody was in on that. The the riots of the summertime, uh, Black Lives Matter, Antifa, etc. So violence combined uh, with uh, ominous threats and problems, it, it, they were uh, able to keep Joe Biden away. It was the idea that had them succeed. It was their comments that shaped reality. Now, w the benefit they had then was that people, you know, Generally, we're trusting people, Americans, right? We're romantics. We don't expect to be lied to by people like the director of the FBI. We, we just don't expect that. So when these things were happening, Americans were, you know, kind of overwhelmed and it worked. The problem now for them is that we know, is that we know we were lied to. We see the condition of the country. The biggest issues are how have these people affected our daily lives, yeah. regardless of the party that's involved, because you've got Republicans in Washington as well, is that you've got a horrible economy that they tell you lies about what's going on with the economy. You know, in your day to day experience that because it, energy and food are not included in the core inflation report. Isn't that funny? So the things that affect your life on a day to day basis, heating oil for the house, natural gas, gasoline, uh, of course, food for the table, lunch boxes, what your husband's taking to work, what you're able to take to work, um, what you're able to do at home based on energy usage and costs, which are driving uh, American budgets into the stratosphere. So every day we're aware of it. And every day they tell us lies about everything's great. Everything's yeah. fine. And the same with the border. So we look back at what we now realize was it was gaslighting. It was tr making you not believe your lying eyes. And so they think they can do it again. They actually don't care, Rebecca. Now we care. You are head of an organization that is committed to the quality of people's lives and you're held accountable. You deliver. People know what you're doing uh, and they're part of this dynamic. The government you'd think should be the same, but they don't care. 
the, they have contempt for the American people. I say this the, as the establishment. Yes. Yes. Right now, it's headed by Biden and the Democrat Party. But but the establishment, these the, the bureaucratic state people who are in there for multiple presidencies, uh, people who are civil servants, uh, FBI agents, uh, ambassadors, U.S. attorneys, all of this. There is a, a, a corporate culture, if you will, of the establishment. And the reason they do it, to get to your question, is that them they're retaining power in their minds is the utmost importance because the American people uh, can't be trusted in their mind. They don't like us. They are, as Obama said, we cling to our guns and our religion. They've had contempt for us. They look down on the American people and they have begun to believe their own publicity. They believe that they are the only ones who can, despite everything around us, make everything good and better. That's In the meantime, right. they've destroyed the American economy. The world uh, has multiple new wars. There are existential threats against of all eight, just 80 years since World War II, of all people, the Jews, if we had not learned. Uh, so these are things that Americans are looking at. The border, of course, drugs being brought in, the sex trafficking, crime in general. The wage wages are now once again going down because of that kind of competition. So Americans, uh, the mistake is because the, the establishment and the Democrats, especially sometimes the Republicans, are so disconnected from the American people, they really don't understand that we have lives and that we are watching them, that we have this conversation and that it's not just, you know, Rebecca and Tammy. It is the hundreds of thousands, the millions of people who might view this and be quiet and maybe don't engage but they're making up their minds and that's what they don't like. They want people to be afraid. They want people to not vote. They want people to be too afraid to go outside still. And I think for them, it's not about being liked or being helpful. It's about how can they manipulate the system so that it works to their benefit and control people so that the voting dynamic moves in their direction. They did not expect Trump no one, I don't know who else could have withstood what <laughs> the government has done. And yet there he is. So I think that also impresses the American people. They see politicians all the time who back down. And with Donald Trump, not only is he not backing down, he seems to be thriving again. And he really is still focused and he's delivered on the things that matter to us. If Joe Biden turned around and the economy was great and the border got closed, it, he could be fine. It's what Americans want when we hire someone to do a job. We don't expect them uh, to punch us in the face. That's right. And people remember that Joe Biden campaigned on bringing honor, normalcy, decency back to the White House. Yet since then, uh, Tammy, you know, cocaine was found in the West Wing. Drag shows were performed on the White House lawn. I remember seeing these men turned women who were literally walking around with their shirts off. And then to end the year, the traditional White House Christmas video, it was so bizarre, wasn't it? It was this tap dancing <laughs> from an activist uh, dance troupe that didn't even reference the birth of Jesus Christ. Uh, I think at yeah. this point, so many people, you know, see this as obvious disrespect towards traditional American values and our culture, and, and it must be intentional. Uh, so, you know, I, and speaking of intentional, I, I'd like to talk a little bit about this new main law and what it means. These sanctuary cities that essentially want to protect young children uh, uh, or give them the right to, to have these uh, permanent uh, sex operations uh, without parental consent. Uh, this seems like the new norm, a huge push to really damage our youth. Tell us a little bit about what you know about what's happening in Maine and across other cities. Well, you know, all of those things you mentioned, you're absolutely right. And this goes to my point that they don't like us. It's just that yeah. simple. They have contempt for us. What has made America strong, and many on the left don't like this, is faith and is family. I mean, that is not an American invention. From the beginning of, of human beings walking around, there has been some sort of faith, a, a realization up in the skies that there is something beyond us. Uh, and it, it might not reflect what we believe currently, 
but we saw that that happening and growing throughout human history. Family was always from the moment you walked out of the cave, you were in there and you were coming out to defend your family. I mean, this is about human instinct. It's about the nature of humanity. And what America did was allowed us to thrive as individuals, allowed us to really show the world what makes life worth living. And that is freedom. Every living creature wants to be free. And, you know, America has allowed us when you've got freedom, uh, you can trust in the decisions you make. You find out what kind of person you are when you're free to make the choices that are available to you. And that is our fight as a, as a society, is who are we going to become while embracing minorities and people who have different beliefs? And that's also, it's like, can this work? Can this experiment work? Can atheists live alongside people of faith? Can gay people live alongside straight people? What, what about races and ethnicities and people who are lear just learning English and all of that? That's the great American experiment and it worked. It worked. And that's also a threat to the left. But when it comes to tradition, at the core of it, and this is what's beautiful about this country, tradition remains and remains the powerhouse of, of freedom, which makes America so great. No other country in the world has our freedom. But at the same time, tradition continues to thrive and matters. So whether it is, you know, the, the simple things, like you think a White House video about, well, I don't know if it was about Christmas, who knows, right? Yeah. Uh, but that that display conditions people into forgetting or believing that, well, government thinks this is best. And it always, generally, we've been able to trust, you know, the direction of the government, that it works for us. So I guess it doesn't matter if we don't see Jesus or Christ in this framework. The Jews, maybe some people, you know, Jews are what, two, three percent of the population at most. Many people don't know a Jewish person. So it's like, that's over there. That's Israel. That doesn't matter here. Or it's Washington or it's New York. And no, excuse me, these are like larger issues, right? This is about the nature of who we become in the midst of situations. So tradition has always mattered. And Maine is another very good example of what we had discussed with Smith earlier, that on the surface, it just looks m malevolent and, and like they want the kids, which they do. I wrote about that in one of my books 20 years ago, is that the left was going to begin to target children because not the main bill has really nothing to do with transgender children. It is a bill that effectively allows human trafficking across state lines. These would be minors who have to, they would be a sanctuary state. That means that you would be moving into Maine from somewhere else. And a minor's not doing that on their own. And another adult would have to facilitate that. That has to be part of the conversation. But no matter how the bill is worded, and it's not just about children not in Maine, Mainers have to recognize that why would it stop with the children from Vermont uh, or New York or, or some red state, ooh, like go from Texas to Maine, God forbid. No, it's about all children. This is, once again, has nothing to do with the issue that they claim it is about, which is uh, transgender surgeries for minors. This is about striking at the importance and power of the family mm -hmm. and about the rights of parents and about the, the sovereignty of the family yeah. and who gets to decide what's best for your children. It is not the government. We've we heard this phrase during the school board meeting dynamic and the FBI and the DOJ labeling parents domestic terrorists effectively, uh, you know, investigating them in that framework is that this is about conditioning people to believe that parents can't be trusted, that only the government can be trusted. And the irony is this is now a government then that tells you, oh, just trust us. We know what's best for children which would allow human trafficking of children by maybe strangers from some organization yeah. to go kidnapping, maybe. Wh who, who the hell knows? Who knows? But the message is, even if it's vetoed, California had a similar yeah. bill. Newsom vetoed it. And not because he's a great normal guy. It's because the left lies until they get into power. But this tells you that the, the Democratic Party is not 
you know, held hostage by the left. These are their policies. It's not just Joe Biden. It's not just California. It's not just AOC. Mm. This is what Democrats everywhere are willing to do. So you've got adult Americans thinking, oh, this is a good idea. Let, let's uh, you know, encourage minors to come here without their parents. What, what could go wrong? But more than that, again, even if it's just a display like it was in California, the template is created and the message is sent that government knows best. Government will take your children because you are a danger. And you know who can relate to that? Pol Pot, Ceausescu, uh, you know, every communist nation. Right. Uh, we, we Americans were outraged when Russia was collecting up Ukrainian children and removing them to Russia sure. proper. Uh, so we've seen this and this must be uh, must be rejected completely. It's political, but mostly it's another strike at the American family, which is at the heart of the tradition of this nation. Mm. Yeah, very well said. And when we think of children, you know, thinking of children, I can't help but think of what's the, the groundbreaking Jeffrey Epstein documents that continue to be released. This is another very serious thing that Americans need to know more about. Now, you wrote in your column on AMAC.US, you said, it has pulled back the curtain on the extent of this establishment protection racket. Uh, Tammy, based on these findings, how confident are you that those, whether they, they were from government, Hollywood, or otherwise, will be held accountable? Because, you know, this is, um, this is bigger, I think, than any one of us could have ever uh, imagined. And uh, we need some accountability mm -hmm. to understand where this all really started and, and what it's all about. Well, it uh, seems to be an unfortunate reflection of what you can do when you can do whatever you want, mm, right? It's yes. like, who do we become? That's the question in the column. Who do we become when we can do whatever we want? And it seems that the people who want to do bad things are attracted to power so they can do bad things. And this is why campaigning matters. It's why you don't let a guy become president from the basement, mm -hmm. why you want people to have debates why you want them to come and why the Iowa caucuses matter, because one of the few places where you have to go and visit every county and shake people's hands and sit down and eat breakfast with them, because we can we can pretty much tell who's, you know, the real deal. And, you know, this is also what Democrats want to stop. They want to stop this engagement, mm. the ability to meet people, because if people who have who are have nefarious intentions are attracted to power, because they know then they can do more because they have the power. Our establishment, the Epstein case, is a perfect example of how that manifests. As you've got all the money in the world, Epstein was fabulously wealthy, uh, hundreds of millions of dollars, uh, involved in business, involved in Wall Street, but inv and involved with politicians and giving money to politicians. Uh, and then what does that add up to? Well, then everybody is in your orbit. Everyone is sort of guilty. And his behavior, apparently, and even and Donald Trump was the one person, by the way, speaking of, of former President Trump, who, like, rejected that guy from his circle. Yes. He was in at Mar-a-Lago, and he had treated a young woman there very badly. And, and the argument is whether or not he assaulted her. But he was ejected from the club, and he was, never spoke to Epstein again. But he was kind of fired from Trump's, in, you know, his circle or just his environment because Epstein's behavior was obvious, and he behaved in a manner that there was no repercussions because up until then there had not been. When you've got people, whether or not they're involved in in the allegations about the island, but when you've when you're flying Bill Clinton around and Hillary Clinton around and and all these lawyers and all, all these, all the famous people, then there's a culpability in a certain way. But more than that, there is this reinforcement that you are above everything. You're above the law. You're above repercussions of your actions. And so again, who do you become when you can do whatever you want? And our system has allowed those people to explore that kind of ugly, uh, diseased, kind of framework. And beyond that, then you attract more people 
who like that environment and who are willing to sustain and facilitate it. I don't think it's horrible, Rebecca. I don't think because of the controls we see, we see what they've done to Trump using a system that we didn't think could be politicized like this. Yeah. But with um, uh, Ghislaine Maxwell in jail, she was the recipient of all that was bad. She is the one that was the ultimate bad person. We got her. She's in jail. Everybody look over there now because of all those ugly MAGA white supremacists. I mean, it is so typical. Uh, Maxwell is appealing her sentence. There were some jury shenanigans. She may, in fact, succeed in getting a new trial. Uh, and while she certainly, uh, it appears, and she's been found guilty of sex trafficking, the fact is, is that there, there were, were some issues with the jury about the reliability of victims, et cetera. But that's why we have our system. You've got to prove things beyond a reasonable doubt. And so that was where she was at. Epstein, just about to face that, decides to kill himself. A French model representative who was in that realm killed himself in jail. When the chips are down, Rebecca, they fold. these people fold. They can't face it. And I'm concerned that we have so many people, whether it's involving children or involving drugs or involving, well, you can look at the Hunter Biden case, yeah. uh, the nature of money from foreign countries, the, the influence that is, you know, facilitated. There is so much. And I think that is why there is such a desperation to keep anyone who does not bend the knee like a Donald Trump or the people that support him from getting power or having any sense of power. That's why there's this broad base of efforts to destroy because there is so much to hide. Yeah, I don't believe that they could have imagined that Trump could have withstood uh, all of that which he's had to deal with over the last three years, essentially, and even and even prior uh, with two impeachments and uh, a lot of lies that we now have recognized are, are just were never the truth. Uh, this this year, 2024, is already off to a chaotic start. I think we're going to expect some more bombshells. Um, but we do have a historically unpopular incumbent, supposedly uh, running for re-election. Re we'll have to see. His leading challenger is going on trial. I mean, this is the backdrop that we are facing as Americans leading up to a, a general yeah. election just nine and a half months from now. Um, what are you expecting to see in the, these coming months? Do you think we'll see more coming out yeah. of the Biden White House in, in terms of um, corrupt business practices? And uh, how do you think Trump will fare? Any surprises that you see around the corner? Well, you know, Trump did even better, I think, in Iowa than people expected. Yeah. Uh, that's a statement, uh, at least certainly for Republicans uh, who are voting and and just, you know, Iowans in general. We don't like unfairness. Americans traditionally, we we want justice and we want bad guys dealt with, but we don't like unfairness. So this has become clearly uh, a, a political persecution and that's not who we are as a country. It doesn't seem to, again, you have to think, why do they not stop? It's because yeah, I wonder still, part of the curtain has been pulled back as I note, what is what else is behind that curtain? They, they seem to be doing all kinds of horrible things to try to protect themselves. They sure when it comes to the Biden White House, I think that um, uh, people think, oh, he'll drop out. But now finally with the congressional uh, investigations, uh, his family, he was they were going to get another pass with that original plea deal for Hunter Biden. That's how that that's how it works. And thank goodness there was a judge, one person who said, this is not normal. Has this ever been done before? And the prosecutor said no. And so this is why our system is important and the people in the system. And she said, yeah, I'm not going to accept this plea deal. And the next thing we know, then they have to, you know, do do things the right way. Uh, and yet, it, you know, we know of all the shenanigans involved in that. I think that Joe Biden will fight even more to not leave the race because the presidency is his only seat of power, mm. that you've got his brother being looked at, his son, certainly. There are multiple other family members that had uh, uh, allegedly, through the congressional investigations, been recipients of certain funds that have come from overseas. So you now have a man who has the power to pardon, has the power to somehow affect what the DOJ does, even though he's not supposed to be able to. Obviously, that's fraud. He can. 
Uh, but ultimately, in the end, it's about saving his family because of, of whatever it is these people have been doing for I don't know how many decades. So he's going to fight, I think, even more to remain the president. Uh, he, he might be getting promises from other Democrats about pardons and things like that. He knows he can't trust his fellow Democrats. He knows that. So I think that he's going to fight to stay. It will be a bigger fight or it will have to be, and I, I do not wish this upon anyone, but some major medical issue that that forces his removal. Uh, but I prefer it to be a political fight amongst themselves. Uh, but we'll see. Jill Biden has the power to stop all of this nonsense. She clearly is invested because, look, it's also her family. So this is what we've got in that regard. You're going to see more fights. You're going to see more information coming out about the Biden family. It's not going to be good. Uh, whether the Republicans have it in them to impeach or, and again, they've started that investigation that gives them broader powers to investigate, which is good. Uh, and, you know, there's going to have to be for someone in the Biden family, some kind of repercussion for what's occurred here. Uh, the Hunter Biden trial dynamic continues on, et cetera. Uh, so I think that matters, not because of his Biden's family, but because of Joe Biden and who he has been. This is important about exposure of what the system has helped facilitate, in Biden's case, for half a century. With Donald Trump, uh, the, the Iowa situation is not a surprise. He will be the nominee. I have liked his energy when he's been doing the interviews and when he's with a rally or a group of people, he's clear. But more than that, Rebecca, he's enjoying himself. I saw this in the first time around. This is a man who's enjoying it, and that comes from confidence and, I would argue, from love. Now, that's not something I mention often. I don't think that I think he's, he started this because in 15, because of power and because of what else do you achieve when you've been, when you're Donald Trump. Right. But in the rallies, all those giant rallies, you remember those giant rallies through 2015 sure and 16, he met the American people. Um, he met them everywhere. And I saw a change in him, in his conversations at the rallies, in his interviews, in his nature of beyond the, the policy issues but about how these things affect people as individuals. And I think he fell in love with the country and he appreciated how we appreciated him. So I think that there is something that other politicians don't have. They have ambition. They have intelligence, some not all. Uh, they, they have a goal, right? And they're maybe really focused on policy and that's important. Loving this country means that you have to love her people. And I see that in no one else at this point other than Donald Trump. There's great talent, talented people on the GOP side. I think there are some de good, decent people on the Democrat side. But there is something that happens to you, and that's the only way to explain Donald Trump's continued focus, what they've done to his family, what his legacy will or will not be. He, he loves this country. And that's what keeps him going. As he continues to win, I don't know how Haley will do in New Hampshire. I like her very much. I, you know, I like the, the talent bench on the right is deep for the, for the Republicans, but for Trump, and I appreciated this as well, it was a sign hopefully for the, the rest of the campaign. He was very magnanimous in the aftermath of Iowa. And I think that's important. Because this country needs an all hands on deck approach That's right. to get her back on her feet. And it's like now or never. And Donald Trump has the capability to do that. I saw a sign of that after Iowa. And I hope that I believe that continues because he knows what, while we need his vision and his energy, he needs people that he can trust and rely on, which he was in short supply of, frankly, in the first term. And I think he knows that now. And uh, so it's going to be it's going to be a wild and woolly year, Rebecca, as you know. It sure but it's, will. it's part of everything in this country's history has been wild and woolly. And uh, I'm excited about it. And it's our generation that is going to help uh, us uh, keep this going in the best way possible for the next hundred years and let them have a similar fight in another hundred years. But 
let's not have it happen on our watch. We're, we're going to get back up. And I think Trump up. is the man that's going to help us do it. Yeah, I have a lot of hope for 2024. I know our listeners do too. It'll be interesting to see. I mean, we won't be here for it 100 years from now, but what the textbooks will read, how they'll read when they cover Joe Biden and the legacy that he's leaving behind, uh, it really is a disgrace. He's a national embarrassment. Uh, you know, I do pray that we have smarter uh, people uh, who can help lead our nation. And that is exactly what AMAC is all about, is really reaching out to average, ordinary, everyday Americans, learning what's important to them, bringing their issues to light, uh, and just helping to preserve this great country that we love so much. Tammy Bruce, it's always an honor to have you with me. Thank you so much for being here. Thank you. And I want Honors to remind, my, appreciate yeah, great work. Uh, to everyone out there, don't forget, I always say this, it's a great, great quote by Edmund Burke, and that is the only thing necessary for the triumph of evil is for good men to do nothing. So be sure to join or renew your AMAC membership because here at AMAC, we are doing so much good. Check us out at amac.us to, to learn more. Thank you all for tuning in. I'm Rebecca Weber. We'll see you next time. Have a great day, everyone. Does social engineering from leftist corporations make you feel like we're living in the twilight zone? If so, you're not alone. And that's why we're proud to stand behind a wireless company who stands behind your values. I'm talking about Pure Talk, an AMAC-supported wireless company on the nation's largest 5G at half the cost of the big three. So I challenge you to stand with a company who champions your values. Those of you who have always had your neighbors back, you've pulled yourself up by your own bootstraps and you still believe that the flag stands for freedom. It's time to join the masses who have fled their old wireless companies for something better, Pure Talk. Pure Talk gives you phenomenal coverage on America's most dependable 5G network for half the price of the other guys, with unlimited plans starting at just $20 a month, the average family saves almost $1,000 a year. And as an exclusive AMAC partner, Pure Talk will give you three years free on your AMAC subscription. Just dial 844-8-PURE-TALK and mention AMAC podcast to make the switch. That's 844-8-PURE-TALK and make sure to mention AMAC Podcast to get three years free on your AMAC subscription.